any progressive, radical, or revolutionary change, it's come from below. And it's been created by people who are no different than anyone watching this right now. American flag is, stands for a couple of different things. One is it's the flag that you know was on our brave soldiers as they fought Nazism in World War II. It's on the brave fireman who gets the cat out of the tree, and it's on the first responders who help people ever. It's also the same flag that is on the uniform of every cop who has murdered an unarmed black person. It's also the flag that was in the courtroom of every judge who let every one of them off. You know, it was on the bombers that dropped napalm. It's like the the, the, the false idea that we need unity. We don't need unity, we need justice. With Rage Against the Machine and with my own work, I've always gone into it in a artistically 100% uncompromising way. So at the time, like Nirvana was ascendant and Pearl Jam was ascendant. And I think that record companies were realizing that they didn't have all the answers as to what sold. And so, like, we, we went in there, like, I, I remember my fax machine, I would fax record companies, like, this list of demands before we would let them take us out to lunch. And to me, it was just like, we're going to make the music we're going to make, we're going to make it 100% uncut, undistilled, unapologetic, and then take it or leave it. Art benefits from authenticity. However, if you do censor yourself and censor real feelings about confronting injustice because you feel it might be the commercially wise move to do, there's an extra hot place in hell for you. I've made 19 records, and the common thread that is in all 19 of those records is that the world is not going to change itself. That is up to you. In this country, there's never been a successful social movement that hasn't had a great soundtrack, period. Music predates spoken language. And there's something in our DNA that when it resonates in a way, it feels like the truth like nothing else. When you combine that, using it as a battering ram against injustices, it can be a very, very potent medium for accelerating change, for putting steel in the spines of those who are on the front lines and wind in the sails of future struggles. Racism and the police murders of black people is absolutely as American as baseball or apple pie. It is a cornerstone. You know, that's why when people say all lives matter, it's such bullshit. When they wrote liberty and justice for all, it didn't mean us. When they said all men are created equal, it didn't mean us. The police are doing the job they were meant to do when they're murdering black people. Their job is not to serve and protect us, it's to serve and protect a power structure with a hierarchical oligarchy at the top that keeps the rest of us down. That's what their job is, and they're doing it as it was prescribed. But this is not a new problem. This is, in some ways, it's the only problem. One of the tent poles of American society is this kind of racist violence. You know what else is a part, an ingrained tent pole of American society, is resistance to injustice. That's been there from day one. From the Arawaks to Nat Turner, suffragettes to Seattle, that's in our DNA too. Courage is contagious. When you see someone stand up against injustice, the next time you encounter injustice, you're like, it's not gonna be this aberrant behavior to stand up for what's right. That's something that people do. The people who made the Berlin Wall fall, the people who destroyed apartheid, the people who dismantled Jim Crow had no more intelligence, power, money, courage, or creativity than anyone watching this right now. They stood up in their place and time for a more just and decent household, workplace, school, country, world, and just did it.